Good morning, Money.net viewers. It is Thursday, June 15th, halfway through the month, 22 trading days in June, and we have 11 remaining. So let's keep the pressure on. This is Steve Flanagan here with you to discuss FX. You can hit me up on the Scout Chat or on my Twitter handle, sflanagan1979, with any questions or follow-ups you might have. As always, it's my intention to educate the viewers with some of the insights and the tools that I've learned over my 40 plus years of trading in the FX markets. I hope we all can come away with a better understanding of what drives and moves the currency markets. Trading FX is exciting, 24 hours a day. Starts at about noontime, just after noontime on a Sunday, New York time, and carries through until Friday, 5 p.m. And it's continuous each day. At 5 p.m., we roll over into Asia and a new day begins. So let's look at what's in the FX news right now. We know that inflation and interest rates and geopolitics are the hot topics. And these are the things that are driving our markets right now. So specifically, we look at what happened yesterday. The Fed paused but didn't stop. What are we calling that? Don't you love how they just come up with these new names? We're calling that a hawkish hold. ECB today has raised by a quarter percent. So they're now at 4%. And the interesting thing, as I always tell viewers here, is look for those little subtleties, those little words that kind of were just edited into a sentence, such as, the staff expects inflation at 5.4% in 2023, 3% in 2024. And the staff expects growth to be 0.9% in 2023. Hello, staff, you're in negative territory right now, halfway through the year. You'd need an explosive growth situation to get yourself to a plus 0.9. How do they arrive at these numbers? Where is this staff pulling these? Are they just pulling them out of thin air? Because they seem to divorce themselves from the reality and from the hard data that us traders want to see and what we make our decisions on. But they seem to come out and fit the narrative. The narrative is that we're going to keep raising rates until inflation is crushed and the economy is growing. Amazingly, we're expecting 0.9%, you know, a total divorce from reality. ECB Lagarde said today, I'm not thinking about pausing my rate rises. Well, thank you. Moving into the Asian market early today, Japan exports expanded at the weakest pace in over two years amid a global economic slowdown. Well, there's real data. Why don't we start examining that? Australia had a very positive job number today, creating 75,900 jobs in the month of May. They were only expecting 15,000. And the unemployment rate dropped from 3.7 to 3.6. This uh, puts a lot of inertia under Australia to raise rates one more time. They're presently at 4.1, looking like we'll probably see a 4.35 with another quarter percent um, increase on that. In China, retail sales were up 12.7%, although they expected them up 13.6. And industrial production was up 3.5%. Very positive numbers out of China. U.S. retail sales plus 0.3, expected minus 0.1. Jobless claims still remain high, 262,000, expected 249. That's not a good thing, and I'm sure that's what's behind Powell on pause. And the New York Empire... Uh, manufacturing was up 6.6. .6. They were expecting minus 15. Philly Fed was only minus 13.7, and they were expecting 14. Overall, a mixed bag of numbers. In, in Asia, 
I would say, very positive for Australia. And in the U.S., it looks like the pause is warranted. Inflation's coming down. We still have growth. Maybe this soft landing idea is, in fact, going to be real. So let's kind of take those that news that's in the market today, and let's jump into uh, some of the particular currencies. We talk about the dollar index. Currencies and money move first. And that's why I stress that you should have a dollar index, or if you want to get into the minutia, get the euro dollar and the sterling and the yen on your screens, because often with money moving first, a trend or a movement that has gone through Asia and then gone through uh, Europe is coming into the North American markets. And when we can pick up on these, often we can take very good trading strategies in North America as the markets look to open. So we are presently at 102.54, absolutely blew through the support level we highlighted at 102.80. And we're now looking at a low level of 102, basically figure 10 level um, as the next level of support. Presently 102.54, um, I think if we look at location trading points, we have 103.55, which you know when we closed yesterday, was a pretty good level to look at as we were at 10301, but today it's kind of in the distance. So a pullback higher in dollar index might be a level where you could short. I'm going to highlight quarter one close, 10251. We are right on it. So, and I always bring the quarters because what do you want to say is, well, if we closed quarter one at 10251, here we are coming into the midpoint and next week we'll call it starting the home stretch of q2 close what has happened nothing nothing has happened well we're 100 points lower so actually uh from last week but on a quarter to quarter basis nothing's happened this is something you want to you want to be looking at and as we go through currencies you want to begin to pay attention uh to these particular things in the euro dollar Last week's close was at 107.50. We're at 109.07 and making a decisively bullish run here. Quarter one close was at 108.45. Look at these levels. You know I'm a very big bear in the euro because we're raising interest rates in the in the sense while the eurozone, 20 nations are in a recession in the fourth quarter and the first quarter, two quarters in a row of negative growth. So Raising interest rates, I, I think, is like a very risky policy. In fact, I think it's destructive policy. And I don't really like the euro, but the euro has made a decisive move up. And it's all based on what was our heading topics, interest rates. The narrowing of the interest rate, 4% in the ECB now, 5.25% in the U.S. You know, this may, if the dollar were to continue weaken could give the Fed a little bit of a reason why in the next meeting to move again. Sterling. Okay, so at 127.30 right now, I know that we've had a lot of talk about what the, you know, Sterling moving back to 130. And yes, it's made a very decisive move. Last week's close was 125.79. Quarter one was 123.33. Well, you know, if we do that quarter to quarter analysis again, we could say what's happened in quarter to quarter. Sterling's higher. Now, that's a definite dollar yen as well. But <clears throat> we have a low this year of 123.12, and we have highs here already set two highs now, 126.79, and now 127.27 is the new high. Why do I bring up the highs? Because Sterling has to create a beachhead above 127. We need to hold the support points, which it could very likely have. We had two recent highs at 126, 66, and 60 earlier uh, in the middle of last year. This is a weekly chart, and we had those two highs this year, today being one of them, and the last at 126.79. If I begin to open up and put a little bit more data in, 
you can see how this 126, 60, 80 zone comes in with highs and lows. And that's why I bring it up here today, because we want to make sure we realize that for Sterling to have a, a solid move up, we need to make sure that this 126.50 through 80 holds all retracements down in Sterling. And then we can begin to talk about a target of 130. In the yen, well, at minus 0 0.1, and Bank of Japan has its interest rate meeting tonight on Friday in Japan. So we will hear, they will most likely do nothing, leaving minus 0.1 and leaving their YCC, uh, that's yield curve control, in place, targeting the 10-year JGB at a half a percent. The high so far has been 141.50. We're at 140.40. What I get concerned about is our previous high of 140.90. Bank of Japan made a comment that we're watching currency markets closely and that currency should reflect fundamentals. Well, today we put a high at 141.50. We have a BOJ meeting. Ooh, it's not good to shake the tree like that in front of the Bank of Japan. Anyway, we watch carefully. I think the correct position is to be short dollar yen here. Let's get through the meeting and then reestablish a long dollar yen uh, after we see what their comments are. We ha have held a long-term objective of 139.80, 142.20. The high so far is 141.50. I'm pretty satisfied with the levels that we've seen. I get through BOJ's meeting, still there at minus... 0.1% interest rate, Japan, and the yen is a currency we want to be short against a high yielder. That's called a carry trade. Long mex at 11 and a quarter percent, short the yen at minus 0.1%. You earn being long and you earn on the short side. That's an incredible carry trade. That's it for the yen. Um, we'll move right into um, a currency that I love to highlight to you. There are two today, Aussie dollar. We had very positive numbers in Australia's jobs report, but even more so in the Chinese trade ministry, there were very positive comments that China and Australia will be putting to rest a number of their trade uh, um, um, topics. And that's a very positive being that Australia sits as a natural exporter to China. So this is something to watch very carefully. You can see already on the employment and and the straw and this uh, political news, geopolitical news, that we've had a high of 68.50 so far. 68.54 is the high so far today at, while we're talking, actually. Um, location trades, we don't really have many. We've distanced ourselves with, I'm looking for now an objective here of 71 and a half in the Aussie. The markets have been so back and forth in a trading range in Aussie. This is a weekly. So here we are right here at the, the entire year. Nothing's really happened in Australia. So therefore, the sudden positive behind us could help uh, the Australian dollar explode to the upside with a 71 and a half objective. Likewise, in the dollar cat, I see dollar cat at 132.67. The low so far was in January, was at 132.62. And we are coming right up into this level right now. Um, and I do believe that we're going to break dollar cad here at 132.62. And I think as in the Australia, where has dollar cad been this year? This is a weekly chart. We've been nowhere. Nobody's got really positions in the dollar cad, but a break of this level, the yearly low, I think could set up a very strong objective of 129 and a half. Do we have location right here? 133.35 was last week's trading close. Well away from us, quarter one close was 131, 135.11. What's happened quarter to quarter? Canada is appreciated. And rightfully so, the uh, Bank of Canada moved rates recently to 4.75%, so only a half a percent off of the U.S., and they are talking about another rate rise at their next meeting. So 
Watch CAD. I like the dollar CAD to the lower side. Last but not least, the MEX. We always highlight MEX because it can be a very um, number three or four most traded currency in a seven and a half trillion dollar day. Dollar CAD is just, it's an uncharted territories. We had set an objective when we were in the 1800s at 1745. We've absolutely blown through that. The low so far is 1709.40. So I don't know what to do with this particular thing. You're earning interest rate at 11 and a quarter percent. It's a great currency to be long, but you've got to be aware that it's a crowded trade. It's been oversold now for well over two months. It doesn't mean anything, but it does simply say trail your stop loss. You can always get back into this on a rally. Uh, you just don't want to sit in the face of a of a highly uh, populated trade. Once sometimes these technical reversals happen, they can move very sharp. Mex in a more in March moved, you know, five percent in a day. So trail your stops. We're presently at 17, 18, 19. I would have to say if you get above a 1745 level, you may want to consider taking a secondary look at that. So that's it for the currency markets. Keep calm and trade Forex. Always been one of our mantras in the Forex markets. And another is once a dealer, always a dealer. I was a foreign exchange dealer. A dealer sets the price. But as electronic trading took place, that that role moved into a very transparent and open marketplace. What is your trading style? You should know it because that's your bread and butter. Always return to your trading style when you get into trouble, where you begin to suddenly feel like you're in the caboose instead of being in the front of the train. We call that the caboose trading, where you sell and everybody's turning around to buy. Get back into what you do and what you do right and then begin to expand your different styles of trading. Location trading can help you. you. It helps you know where you have been so you can have a better view of where we're going. I'll always try to highlight this when we have them, but when the markets begin to move, we begin to move away from those, and then it becomes a matter of strong risk management, a skill set I will hopefully always highlight to you when I talk to currencies. Fear, systematic trading risk, geopolitics. These are three big negatives that are out there in the marketplace each and every day. They're percolating underneath of the market. Know them. When you see a headline, we know what happened in March in systematic risk. One, buy yen, safe haven. Two, buy gold, safe haven. And I'll even throw a third one out, although that's beginning to stretch, but to buy sterling as presently the fundamentals in the pound are pretty good. And it's a great offset against Europe as Canada and Mex are an offset against the dollar. We play the currencies regionally. Anyway, we know what the game plan is by the central banks. Very clear. We must break the back of inflation. They've taken Paul Volcker's game plan and they've highlighted it and they've laid it out. The only difference is that they do not have the gumption to step forward and say, we may cause a recession. Christine Lagarde today, to hear her talk about how rosy everything is, in spite of two quarters of negative growth and 20 nations are presently in a recession, is pretty incredible that they can still have this grandiose ideas of where interest rates are going while the populace suffers. That's enough for today. It's a wrap. Let's keep the currency markets hot. I'll see you next Tuesday morning at the same time. Flanagan out.